Hello there! Today we're going to look into some unknown, undiscovered features, tools and user cases from Affinity Apps. So I hope whatever you are a beginner or even a veteran, you will find something new, something useful in this video tutorial. This is your first time here. Please consider subscribing to this YouTube channel for more tutorials like this. All right, let's get started. So the first thing I would like to cover today is cross compatibility for Affinity Apps. So as you can see, now I'm working in Affinity Designer. I got multiple artboards, use some native tools for designer. And what if I need raster tools next? Of course, I could use my pixel persona. That's give me some limited raster tools. But what if I need a full scale raster editor? Actually, I can just save this file as Affinity Designer file and reopen it in Affinity Photo. I will end up with the very same file and I will have access to all of the tools from Affinity Photo. And that's actually the way to create multi artboard documents in Affinity Photo. As you may know already, you cannot use artboard tool in Affinity Photo, but if you set up your document in Affinity Designer first, create multiple artboards and then open it up in Affinity Photo, it will still have all of the artboards for you. So keep in mind, you can open your documents in different Affinity apps and you will benefit from tools that are native for that app. So that is the first kind of unknown feature or even if you know about it, many people just forget that they can use it. So keep in mind, if you are working on your Affinity Designer file, you feel like you need raster editor right next, just open this file up in photo, you can do that. The second unknown feature is palette from image. So peop some people just put the image inside the project and then they picking colors using color picker one by one, you can actually go to your swatches, click those three lines menu, this hamburger menu, and as you can see, there's option to create palette from image. From here, we can load the image. And I can also use this slider below to extract certain amount of colors. Take a look. Or maybe just three colors and I can click create. And here's my new palette made out of that image. So you can create a palette directly from the image. You don't need to just pick the colors one by one. You can customize your artboard. What does it mean? Recently, I saw a Facebook post. Somebody asked for help. It was rather simple request, how can she round corners on her image? That was like picture raster image in Affinity Designer. And many people advise her to put this image into a shape rectangle and then round the corners on that rectangle. Great advice, but actually you can round corners directly on your artboard. If I select your artboard, I can round corners, take a look. That's perfect. What else can we do? If your artboard is rectangular, so we got one to one, you can literally round your corners to the level that you will end up having a circle, oval artboard as well. So keep in mind, you can modify the size of your artboard. You can also modify the shape of it. It's not always a rectangle, right? So the artboard is simply a glorified shape that put everything together, but we can make some changes to it, like rounding corners. All right, what next? We can set up a drawing scale now. That's a new thing in Affinity Designer version two. So if you head to area tool, at the top, you will see there's drawing scale setup one, two, one. You change that one to 10, you will be able to draw your objects in that scale. So if you the 
draw the object here you will be able to modify the size based on the scale we set up before so when you're working on the map or the plan for the house this will be super handy because you can actually use the real size of the object but you can still print it out on a4 paper very very handy and as you can see above this artboard i got this indication that this artboard is scaling 1 to 10 so whenever i drag this object i can see that this one is already 1000 millimeters of course we can change those units change those units to centimeters feet inches whatever you need so in that case that's already 100 centimeters so that's one meter and it's here on the a4 page because we're using this scale 1 to 10 so keep in mind if you are working on the plan on the map or maybe you're doing some design for the car you can set up a scale so you can actually use the real size and still fit it on a4 paper to make some like test prints and stuff like that so that's really handy let's move forward artboard color same as with the artboard shape we can simply select the artboard itself as you can see by default there's no color but we can select color for the artboard so you don't need to draw this rectangle as the backdrop again you can just recolor the artboard itself and if you don't put the fill color and it's white it doesn't mean it's transparent actually we can go to document setup and from here from color we can turn on transparent backdrop and then you will see this checkerboard thing indicating transparency all right and now i can of course still fill that with white color and this artboard is white but the next one is transparent because we changed document settings all right and the last unknown tip for this video you can hold to hide layers in this recent update when they moved to from version 1 to version 2 they get rid of those checkboxes and we got those little circles at the end of the layer take a look here in the layer panel so of course we can click this to turn stuff on and off but you can actually click and hold and drag it down and this way you will switch off multiple layers at the same time and other way around you can click and drag i still holding my mouse down i can turn them on without clicking 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 so that's handy all right so keep in mind we can use those little circles while holding the mouse down so we can toggle multiple of them in the same time we can change the artboard color we can also turn on transparency for the artboard in document settings we can draw in scale nowadays so that's really handy if you're working on the map or plan we can customize a shape of your artboard so you can for example round corners on this artboard and that's it we can import the whole color palette from the image and of course we can reopen our file from one program into another so let's try to do it at the very end of this video i'm going to open this file in affinity photo to show you and here we are in affinity photo very same document i used before in designer and as you can see i got all of my artboards here even though there's no artboard tool for affinity photo we can still import artboards from designer files even the recent change on this artboard i ran the corners a moment ago it's here this one it's correct as well and it's scaling so as you can see you can import your files back and forward between apps whatever you use, need to use those tools so now i lose some of my vector editing tools but i gain rust editing tools that's a really nice trade so keep in mind that's also possible all right i hope you found something new and useful in this tutorial don't forget to check the whole playlist for affinity designer there's also a separate playlist for affinity photo and affinity publisher as well and i hope i will see you in the next lesson bye